Welcome back to the channel. A few months ago, I tested out a RevoPoint POP23 scanner, and it probably was the worst 3D scanner I have ever used. So what I have today is a Creality CR Scan Ferret, and this is actually supposed to be a really good 3D scanner for the price range. Inside the packaging, you get a user manual and it shows you how to set up your 3D scanner. It also shows a nice workflow as well as where you need to go to download the software. This 3D scanner allows you to use your phone or your computer. It also has a nice mount to hold your phone. It also comes with a tripod that doubles as a power bank and then you mount the phone holder to that and it just really is convenient because it keeps all your wires centrally located and you don't have to worry about having a separate power bank and then finding a place to clip it on or having this directly wired into USB, especially if you're using this with your phone and not a computer or a laptop. After you get the phone holder clip screwed into the tripod base, you just need to clip in the 3D camera mount and it's pretty simple, just slides in, and then this just adjusts out to hold it down. Now you wanna unpackage the 3D scanner, just pull it out. There is this protective masking on it you wanna remove. All you need to do is screw the 3D scanner into this base and make sure it's snug. All the cables you're going to need are in this pouch right here. You just need to pull them out and these connect it to your phone or to your computer. So how these cables go is this cable right here goes into the 3D scanner like so. And then you just tighten it down. It doesn't have to be super tight. I think they give you a wrench, but I would definitely not recommend using that wrench. USB right here goes into the power bank and then the power bank lights up. It's fully charged. And this USB goes into your phone. All right, it fits my phone very well. Now we're gonna attach my phone. So I now have the app all set up. They actually had to fix some bugs. For some reason, there was an issue with the S22 Ultra, but now all you do is you hit new scan right here and you can actually adjust your light levels, which is nice. You can have an automatic or manual, like it would be in a more expensive scanner. And you can adjust the levels for the exposure. And you can also adjust down here for color exposure, which is really cool. And uh, I'm just going to leave it in automatic on both these and see how it does. And what I want to try to scan is I want to come over here and I want to scan kind of the front of the car on the Hellcat station wagon just because I need to figure out and I want to redesign this bumper support. And you can already see it's showing up. It says move closer. So we're going to hopefully get a scan out of this. And all I need to do is hit start. Oh man, this is working, seems like a lot better than the, uh, the last one I tried. Let's see, mm, she's just lost tracking it looks like. It's doing kind of like the last one was doing, just kind of spiraling, spiral, spiraling off into the void of non-existence of like just this one area that I'm scanning, which is crazy. I don't know why it does that. So I'm gonna hit pause. We're going to go undo, clear the scan, confirm. The one thing I wanna try since I haven't tried it yet is I'm going to go to this right here and the object is going to be, let's try large. 
I'm going to try the bumper support and I'm guessing we're going to do a body because we want to do the front of a car. So let's reduce this menu now or collapse it. New scan. Ooh. Oh, that's not bad. It's actually showing hot spots. Okay. Move closer. Move closer. I don't need to go any closer. Okay, so let's now hit start. This is, wow, it's actually working. I'm gonna hit pause really quick. So you look at this. Oh, wow. It, it picked up the oil cooler back there, the duct, the bumper support, the bottom of the headlight bracket. Oh, this is working way better now that it's on like a, and it's not even sprayed. It's just glossy. Set like kind of semi gloss, it's just a bumper support, so it's not too prepped, but it's not super shiny, and it's actually getting all the features pretty well. Look at that, we have the holes right there. Yeah, look at that, it's got the duct perfectly, it got the little rivet right there, you can see it right there, it has the oil cooler fins. It's even picking up the wire. It has the whole plug right there. See, it's it's right there. So it's actually surprisingly working very well. So let's try to scan this whole bumper support because I kind of need it. And oh, picked it right up. Oh, this is gonna maybe be hard because I'm crouched. Whew. I cannot believe that it's doing this well. Oh, it's kind of hard because I'm crouched. I'm gonna hit pause again. <clears throat> All right. So that it got it has the radiator, it has the ducting coming around. It has the arc. Looks correct. I I'm at awe right now how well this is working just off of a phone, just as a handheld device. I'm very surprised. So I think I'm gonna scan a bunch of stuff because I have been needing to scan just random bits like this so I can, I've been wanting to remake a bumper support. I just finished scanning this bumper support off the charger. And as you can see, after you go next, you can go hole filling off or on, closure, off or on and you could do stl poly an object i'm going to do is it stl okay and then you just have to hit next next and it's going to mesh it as an stl and it'll probably take 
five to 10 minutes to do that. It will add your file to all the files that you have. Surprise how well this scan ferret works. For a very cheap 3D scanner, it actually, they're starting to get better and better, which that's my biggest issue with these things. It's the, you know, the technology has been there for 10 plus years, but making a affordable, good 3D scanner for the public to use, to do simple things like this, that's not gonna cost you $150,000 for a 3D scanner to be able to do a bumper support that you're gonna do maybe one of, and it's not a production part. So after much testing with the CR Scan Ferret, finally being able to get it to work after a few, quite a few failure attempts, and then I figured out that I need to have it in the correct setting. So it was more of a settings issue than a 3D scanner issue. But like I said before, the technology of 3D scanners has been around for 10 plus years. So having an affordable 3D scanner that actually performs and does what it's supposed to do is very, very surprising because most of the time you buy these and they don't work, they don't scan. Obviously this is an affordable 3D scanner. So it is gonna take a lot more patience to use than a more expensive 3D scanner. But for the 3D scanner, the price range, what you're getting, I feel like is more than what you're spending. And having a 3D scanner that's affordable, that's going to work is awesome. And I'm really happy I'm gonna be using it on a bunch of projects. Like I said, it's not a $150,000 3D scanner. So expect what you're paying for, but I would say that this would compare to almost, I'm not gonna throw it out there like 12 to $15,000 3D scanners, but it was working as exceptionally well. So I would say that it's comparable, but you know, as I was scanning, it was losing some data points, but I feel like that's more of a coding issue than an actual hardware issue. So I'm gonna end the video here. If you need one of these 3D scanners, there is going to be a link in the description. Go check them out. They are very handy. And as always, if you like these videos, make sure to click the subscribe button, thumbs up, throw a comment below. See you next time.